Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Welcome to Knuckleheads of Liberty Podcast, <clears throat> formerly the Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. Uh, we're coming at you on the uh, last show of 2020. Thank goodness we're just about to the end of 2020 here. So this is December 30th uh, we're broadcasting this show. And um, we uh, uh, are going to have kind of a special show on this one. It's going to be kind of a, a year-end wrap-up of you know some of our thoughts on the year. But before we get into that, let me introduce you to our panelists. Up in our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon the Word Brathwaite, Last Word in Liberty. He is a retired engineer from the state of California. And up in our left-hand corner, we have our Screaming Eagle of Freedom, Tim Everett, a pilot in the state of California. And <laughs> uh, my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. And so let's uh, let's jump right into the topics. So, you know, 2020 has been kind of a crazy year. So biggest story of 2020, you know, let's, uh, you know, uh, jump right into it. Uh, uh, certainly COVID has to be one of them. But, uh, you know, let's let's jump right into it. What, what do you guys think? Uh, biggest story of 2020. Well, it definitely was a story, that COVID thing, and uh, boy, did the uh, media jump on that one with a vengeance. Uh, what what better way to instill fear in their uh, viewership and thus sell more um, uh, advertising um, slots in, in, the, in their shows than to... Uh, to, to really expound upon, expound upon uh, something that, that might kill you, you know, if, if you got it, uh, golly. So you're, you're going to stay tuned next, uh, next program for sure. And I, I think we saw uh, a, a lot of that. That's the big story. Yeah. Whether it was deserved. I mean, can you imagine back in the old days, someone brought this to my attention in a podcast I was listening to. But imagine back in the old days of NBC, CBS, um, and ABC, and, uh, and that's about it. So, so you would, um, you would uh, read the newspaper, and you would maybe listen to the 6 o'clock news, and if you were up that late, 11 o'clock uh, wrap-up uh, of news, and, and that's it. I mean, how, um, how much would this have taken a hold of the, the nation? Or would it just uh, this COVID thing? Or would it just have been, you know, there's there's a, there's a it's a really bad flu season this year. There's there's been some deaths in New York and so on and so forth. Um, you know, c- compare c- contrast and compare that to uh, today, where it's it's twenty four seven, nothing but news on seventeen twenty five or how many different stations, and then you've got. Uh, your social media, where, um, uh, you know, you got all your, your friends and everybody, you know, going at it 24 <coughs> seven, and uh, it's, just, it's just nonstop. I mean, what, what would it have been like? Would there have been a shutdown? I, I doubt it. Uh, you know, it would have been just, you know, just, but, but this was back in the day when we, we, when everything wasn't politicized as, but, on the bright side, I have f- discovered which ones of my Facebook friends are halfway intelligent and which <laughs> ones are just a bunch of boot-licking, moronic minions. And uh, uh, so that's been uh, eye-opening there, uh, if nothing else. <laughs> okay. The biggest story of 2020, I think, is that when history is written, we're going to look back on this year and see that a half senile gentleman <laughs> sat in his basement and beat an incumbent president by a bunch of millions of votes. And we will never understand the ins and outs of this great event that occurred in 2020. That, to me, have to top all stories. How does a half senile man sit in his basement and beat an incumbent president? Well, you know, top all of it. It's funny, Leon, because that 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 2020 story 
almost trumps the 2016 story of the election on how does yeah, game yeah. show host win. Yeah. And now, we have, now we suddenly have a guy who literally it can can barely string coherent thoughts together is telling yeah. us about how he fought a guy named Corn Pop with the chain yeah. out of the swimming yeah. pool. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this all kinds this, of nonsense. Uh, this this same this same guy who so who who came out of nowhere and beat the incumbent president just yesterday, just yesterday, referred to his vice president elect as the president elect. Just yesterday he did that. So, okay. This is and this is the guy who beat the incumbent president. That to me is the biggest story of 2020. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Um <laughs> Yeah, I, I, well, I don't know. Um, the The author of the book "Loser Takes All," which was a book written uh, quite a few years back about how the Republicans, uh, with after the passage of the um, the Voter Something Act, the one the, the act that Congress um, passed that uh, allowed for digitized voting, you know, with with uh, with computerized machines and stuff like that. Instead of back yeah. in the old days where you had the the little, remember the, what what they call it? Nits or or something, those uh, pips or whatever they were that you, you punch through with your little punch. Oh, yes, machine. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I remember what they called it. Yes, I remember it too. <laughs> yeah, and you could have hanging nits or whatever. Yeah, I mean, chads. I mean, chads. chads, and chads. Yeah. Chads. Oh my God. Yeah. I drifted close to something dear to my heart there with that yeah. word. And, uh, you know, so I, I need to, uh, I need to be careful here, but chads. Yes. That, that's right. That's quite a bit different than what I was thinking. I don't know where I was there, but, uh, so, um, yeah, uh, when they when they um, they graduated to that whole digitized uh, thing, he was explaining um, there was lots of elections that the um, and in his book he was mainly focusing on what the Republicans had done to um, to steal elections and so on, and now he said that the Republicans have a, a selective amnesia because they've forgotten what they did. Now it's being done to them, but only more blatantly. Yes. Uh, uh, he, you know he. His uh, interview was about another subject entirely, but but he uh, he expounded just to that extent that yeah this this is just he went he went through about three or four different generalizations of what the Democrats did this time to uh to, you know to <laughs> to steal the election and so yeah it's it's no longer. Uh, uh, difficult to do with uh, digitized vote counting as it was in the past with the the chads, whether they were hanging or uh, completely punched through, they were chads that that made it much more difficult to um, uh, to uh, uh, to steal an election. Right. And now it's you know the cat's out of the bag. You know, in, in this day and age, I'm not sure, especially with with the powers to be. And, and and so much of of this denial that there was any issue whatsoever by the powers to be that be uh, I don't know that this is ever going to improve. It, 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 I don't see it getting improved. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, and we, that's really sad because uh, anyway, that's what we base things on here politically. Anyway, what's funny when you mentioned Chad's that that kind of brought up a runner up story in my mind you know when you say chaz you know was a close thing oh. to chad's and that was yeah, the, yeah. Uh, oh, the the oh, the, uh, yeah. the, yeah. the uh, autonomous zone the capitol oh, hill yeah. autonomous oh, yeah. zone yeah. in seattle and the idea that a uh that that literally a, a group of people could just sort of take over six blocks <laughs> or four yes. blocks or whatever it was and a city just sit by and say, well, we're going to see how this experiment plays out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just, you know, this, we this had our summer of love. <laughs> summer of love. We had a secession. We had a secession from, from the United States. Okay. Yeah. Because they, they're not going to live by our laws or not like that. We had a secession and a city government was sitting by and watching it. We fought a whole war between the states over this very issue. And these yeah. people were just watching this happen. Oh, yeah. Well, what was crazy too is when the governor was first, uh, this was first mentioned to him on an interview, and he didn't even know it was happening, or at least he claimed he didn't even know it was happening. <laughs> <laughs> but just 
just bizarre. Uh, You're governor of the state of Washington. Funny. You literally don't know that six blocks in one of your biggest cities, uh, you know, in the I've world it. <laughs> just declared yeah. itself, you know, uh, its own nation. Yeah. <laughs> and funny. by the way, send free stuff, you know, because we're yeah, outside, right, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, outside of the trampling of private property rights, yeah. it was it was quite an entertaining uh, thing to watch. Uh, you know, and eventually the whole thing uh, collapsed. I mean, but it was the summer of love without the warm weather, the nudity, <laughs> the pot. Well, maybe they had pot yeah. and, and the, the the blatant sex all over the place. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, to me, that's that's just missing too many um, key factors. To well, and, really and, the summer and of love. Throw in a few dead bodies, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, violence. Yes. No kidding. Things. Yes. Yeah. 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 Which is kind of what uh, yeah. what devolved the whole thing. But no, that to me, that was just a runner-up. I it, To me, that the story of 2020 is the story itself, you know, and it's the, yeah. the media, the way the mask just came off. I mean, uh, in, in 2016, the mask sort of came off with Trump, you know, and we saw the way that, you know, they had literally just lined up on you know, subjective sides, you know, Trump's on one side, the media's on the other. We got yeah. four years of that, but oh my gosh, in 2020, the media was literally just, uh, you know, essentially telling us that, well, you've got to, you know, this COVID thing is something that is super dangerous. And so you got to get inside, but, oh, wait, if you're protesting for black lives matter, get yeah. in large crowds, yeah. go break windows. Yeah, that's right. yeah. <laughs> you got going down, you got going down all kind of crap and everything else and nobody cares. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, and it's just, it was the, yeah. it was sort of the story behind every story was the yeah. sort of the media and the idea that there was just this weird narrative going on. I mean, it wasn't even, it wasn't, there wasn't even an attempt to really put a mask on it. Uh, you know, Project Veritas even had an expose where they, they had, uh, what is it the Washington Post, I think, or was it the New York Times? I'm not sure which it was, but they got inside the, uh, uh, thing and they had the uh the 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 chief guy there no, essentially it was CNN. It was CNN. oh that was CNN. CNN. okay cnn yeah. yeah and essentially telling everybody what the narrative was going to be and you know essentially you know it's a trump's a dangerous guy we got to get him out of there yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and, it, and even to the point where the uh, the media would not cover the whole biden uh scandal and the exactly. idea that his son was literally, you know, just pretty pretty much caught red-handed, you know, with, uh, uh, you know, collecting these bags of money. They had, uh, you know, I can't even remember the guy's name, but one of the people who was involved with it came out and did a press conference, say yes. <laughs> we were collecting. He was his name, last name. Yeah, so it was just kind of crazy, you know, the way that the the mainstream media had just decided, well, mainstream is, you know, we are clearly an arm of the Democrat Party at this point. We're not. The, the mask is completely off. You're right. So I, to, to me, 2020 was was pivotal just in the sense of, you know, I, can we even believe anything we hear anymore? You know, and, and, and down to the covid stuff as well. You know, I mean, uh, you know, guys like Fauci were literally canonized by the media. And even after telling the media he lied about things, he lied about, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> about several things, about several things. Yes, yes, but he, but he, he's on their side. He's got the narrative they want. So yeah. we're just going to look right past that. <laughs> well, I, I think we we know that the media is going to lie to us. We just don't know when and what it's about. So what do you do then? You know, do you, do you trust them for anything? Because you don't know when they're going to lie or when they're going to yeah. leave. Very important aspects of the story out of the narrative and because it doesn't fit their narrative so it's it's yeah. just you just so why anybody pays attention to them anymore is beyond me yeah indeed indeed and, and it, it even went beyond the media it went to social media as well you know where yes. social media entities like twitter and such literally just said look we're not 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 only are we specifically not covering the story if you try to post something we're going to block you block exactly. which is just crazy you know exactly. I mean, so, yes yeah twitter so. facebook google all of them they were all mm -hmm. there stopping the um the hunter biden the new york post had the hunter biden story and they were out there making sure nobody as much as possible nobody heard about it yeah oh so anyway, th those are some of the big stories that uh, that we've noticed for 2020. Um, but you know, certainly the the the, the big one that 
you know, and, and Tim sort of jumped on this right from the beginning is, you know, COVID and how that has really affected all of our lives, whether it be the government shutdown or just simply the fear of COVID, all these things. So, I, you know, I guess uh, starting to look ahead, you know, you guys see, are we near the end of the tunnel on COVID? Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> I, 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 uh, I'm going to put two scenarios out. Uh, number one, um, the, the media wants it to go ad infinitum because it's, it's lines there. It's good for their bottom line. Uh, but then on the other hand, uh, now that Biden's in there, they've got to, they got to minimize it. They've got to talk about how, you know, the old, uh, puppy's tails are wagging faster and kitties are purring louder now. And the sky is bluer and, you know, the, the clouds are wider and just everything's hunky dory. Uh, and you know, it, things just couldn't be better now that Biden, Joe Biden, um, Mr. Basement Biden is, uh, <laughs> is, uh, is in power. You know, he's sitting on the throne, uh, in the white house. And, uh, so anyway, uh, so I'm, I'm perplexed. I don't know who's going to win out. Uh, is the, the Biden administration going to, going to strong arm the executives at the, the big, uh, you know, news outlets, you know, wh what are they one or two, the, the API or the, yeah. you know, who, who's, who's, uh, narrative is going to win. And, you know, maybe they'll just shake their heads and go, oh, we're going to make so much money with this COVID thing. We got to keep it going. But but you're in power now. So COVID went away. Well, well, I'm sure they have to um, they, they have to make it make it go away. And even though. Even though we have we now have a vaccine and already we are hearing Biden and, 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 and Kamala Harris already talking about all, all the things they're going to do with the distribution. Even though Operation Warp Speed is well on its way, things are probably going a little bit slower than anticipated. Um, so the, the question is, are we seeing some light at the end of the tunnel? I would say yes, if you believe that the vaccine is, is, um, is effective and safe. I believe it looks effective and i think it's as safe as can as uh, as possible so i think we there's some light at the end of the tunnel but who's going to get the credit for it that's up to the media because operation warp speed nobody mentions that anymore as as, as far as i see at least the non fox media yeah and and now we're hearing that Biden now is going to be distributing this vaccine and he's going to have 100 million doses available in, in his first 100 days and all those wonderful things are going to happen. Yes, the, the puppies are going to be wagging their tails a little faster and the, the sky is going to be bluer, bluer and, and, and all the hurricanes are going to stop and the oceans oh, yeah. are going to stop rising and global warming is going to go away and we're going to be living this nice, wonderful utopia. Joe Biden is president. What can I say? <laughs> well, that's yeah. It's funny, you know, we'll certainly uh, forget, like you said, about uh, Operation Warp Speed, and suddenly it'll all be out about Biden's 100 days of masks, which was his big plan going into 2021. Yes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, uh, of but, note, too, is uh, this uh, calling this vaccine free. Um, <laughs> you know, my I didn't. Well, you know, on the doses that we've uh, delivered so far in, in our planes, um, we weren't flying those over there for free. We still got our salary. I'm right. assuming the company I work for probably charged for the shipment of those <laughs> vaccines to their recipients. Sure. And uh, you so, mean you didn't deliver those on Santa's sleigh? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. A company, a dis I didn't get a call from dispatch, or, or when I called in in the morning to dispatch, said, "Okay, I'm here. I, I've got the plane ready to go." Uh, I didn't hear them say, "By the way, we're not paying you today because <laughs> you're you're shipping some some vaccine, and therefore." Uh, we're not going to pay you. We're not getting paid. Our company is not getting paid. Our, our customer is not getting paid. 
therefore, um, uh, you're not getting paid because remember the media is saying how free this free vaccine it is. is. It is <laughs> free, right? So, um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, just just have peace of mind that you'll be, be doing the society a favor by delivering this vaccine and flying this airplane for free, no yeah. charge. And uh, so, but but apparently I didn't get that call or didn't go like that. It was just like business as usual. As far as I can tell, my paycheck is still coming in normal. Right. My uh, my assumption, I, I, I'm not very bright. You know, I'm kind of slow. But <laughs> my uh, my initial assumption is that this virus uh, is not free at all, that Pfizer charged the government for it or whoever's paying for it. Well, we know who's paying for it. I mean, it's, well, I was going to say taxpayers, but no, it's it's going into the mountain of debt and the, yeah, the debt that's accumulating more and more and more. And either we're going to get hammered real hard with inflation rates. Uh, again, I, I know I sound like a broken record, but uh, in high inflation or or it's just going to be uh, kicked down the road and somewhere or, or the whole monetary system is going to collapse and everybody will, you know, lose everything. But uh yeah, the, this whole nonsense, and, and then this omnibus, omnibus spending bill with <laughs> um, you know all this money going to these foreign nations, and and this six hundred or two thousand or whatever it is, everybody's going to get uh, below seventy five grand. I mean, if you have an income seventy five grand, seriously, you, you're going to with a straight. I I don't know what to do if I got a check for whatever amount that I'm deemed worthy of. Last time it wasn't enough to, you know, ex, ex, but you know it's it's donation time if you ask me. Well, well, keep in mind too though that that seventy five grand assumes what your income was last year, which may be very oh. different from what your income is this year. So I mean, oh, that's you, true. you may have been making a hundred thousand last year, and the government may right. have put you out of business this year. Right. Yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah, yeah, you might might have burned through seventy five thousand dollars worth of uh, savings. You know, and, and if you had that, you know, if you had that, exactly. Yes. Very few people have that much, but anyway. Well, yeah, you know, Tim. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, you know, you, you were talking about inflation, and actually that was one thing I wanted to kind of cover before we get to the end of our show. I think we'll probably just, you know, uh, our knucklehead noise patrol, that'll just be our predictions, I guess, for the yes, year, because okay. I did want to get into predictions. So you'll, you'll you know, get uh, get some noise here from us on uh, what we think about 2021. And, you know, I think you hit the nail on the head when you're talking about inflation, because I think at some point, uh, you know, as we keep printing out trillions of dollars, and I don't think we've gotten to the end of the damage from these lockdowns. I, I you know, uh, I think once yeah, people started. Yeah, I think once people yeah. stop panicking from the from the, you know, thought that, hey, we're, we're all going to die because the media has has ginned everybody up to that story. Now people are going to start to say, hey. Uh, I, I don't have my job anymore. Hey, I don't have that business anymore that you killed. And, and hey, wait a second. That's not fair. I want something back, you know, now that we're not all panicking. And, you know, right. I, what are they going to do other than just keep papering it over and handing out more money for years to come? I, I don't see where this all, you know, unless the goal was just to make Jeff Bezos king of <laughs> America by, <laughs> by, yeah, by at, killing at least... all his competition. Yeah, so. but at least he earned it. You know, he was there to pick up the slack when they closed down the mom and pop store next down the street, you know, so yeah. he's, he's yeah. always there. And uh, yeah, um, <coughs> I, I lost my train of thought. Leon, help me out here. What well, you well I, I mean, the whole, the whole idea about, about this Jeff Bezos thing, I mean, you know, yes, he was there to pick up the slack, but the tragedy in all of that, in his picking up the slack, was that was that he, the mom and pop stores went out went out of business? Many of them, and many of them are not coming back. Yes. Okay. I mean, that probably is one of the big stories of the of the pandemic. That when when this thing is over, when when we have finally got to that light at the end of the tunnel, many of those mom and pop sh shops are not going to come back, and all of the big businesses that never close are going to be still be around. Bezos with Amazon, Walmart. Costco, Walgreens, CVS, all of these people are going to still be around. And mom and pop, who's just down the street from us, they're gone. 
some of, most of them gone permanently. Some of the restaurants also, the same thing. And that is the tragedy yeah. of this pandemic. Yeah. One of the yeah. tragedies, I should say. Well, well as, as far as predictions go, Leon, what do you, what do you think is going to happen with all these businesses? I mean, do they, are we going to, you know, I, are, is the government going to prop them up, uh, give people money to keep businesses going, or are they going to just simply, uh, you know, just, just let Bezos run everything? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't see, well, I don't see um, any more, any more propping up occurring. I don't see that in, in the future. I think, some of these businesses that, that have been hit and hit hard by these lockdowns, they are going to go away and go away permanently. Now, new businesses will come up. I haven't, I haven't, give, I have not given up faith on that. New businesses will pop up once mm -hmm. we get out of this panic phase that we are in. But um, the cost of this pandemic is way too high, especially on small businesses, mm -hmm. especially on. On, on, on human life in terms of the suicides and the alcohol and the, the drug abuse and all the things that happened, the costs have been way, way too high. Yeah. So I and think that, new businesses will prop up to take the, the place of the old businesses, but the sadness of so many of them having to go away, I think is is um, is an untold story of, uh, but, of 2021. Yeah, not not to mention the, the school, the impact of uh, not going to school with your- but one friends yeah. growing up, uh, you know, some of my fondest memories and what made me was going to school and being around yes. other kids. Yes. Uh, you know, so we, we, we haven't seen the fallout from that yet. It's, it's uh, the damage is being done right now. You know, we haven't done a damage report yet. You know, we're still getting yeah. slammed in the side by the torpedoes to, to be able to do that. So, so anyway, uh, but on the bright side, I mean, there's, there's been some progress made with people becoming more entrepreneurial by, you know, mother, uh, uh, what's the mother of invention? Necessity is the mother of invention. And so, yeah. you know, the, these people, the, the American spirit of entrepreneurialism uh, still crops up. And I don't know how much longer that's going to last with this new generation of everybody going, uh, but the vaccine is free. You know, I mean, <laughs> who, who are these people? Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know how much longer that's going to last, but at least for now, there, there's still signs that uh, people are making adjustments and, and doing what's necessary to put food on the table. And um, for some, I mean, definitely the, the damage is, is uh, fatal to so many, uh, and, yeah. and who knows what's going to happen as well. a result. Well, but at least it sounds like that entrepreneurial spirit sounds like at least one high note to end on in 2021. Yes. So, uh, you know, hopefully yes. that will override all the other negatives coming up that we're yeah. likely to face in 2021. Uh, but uh, certainly, uh, you know, we'd like to say thank you uh, for attending or listening to our shows. Uh, and uh, we hope you'll continue to listen to us going into 2021. Uh, again, you can catch our shows at uh, libertariancounterpoint.com or Facebook uh, Libertarian Counterpoint page. Um, and like I said, if you've got stories as well uh, about how you may have been impacted this year by uh, our peaceful protesters or the, uh, uh, the, uh, you mostly, know, the lockdown. Mostly peaceful protesters. Exactly. The mostly peaceful protesters uh, from our mainstream media. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, uh, you know, if, uh, contact us at knuckleheads. Uh, at libertariancounterpoint.com. And if uh, you got a story of how you've been impacted by any of these things, uh, hopefully we can uh, have you on the show and talk about it. Uh, also, too, if you ran for office as a libertarian uh, as well this last year, we'd love to hear uh, your experience uh, about that on the show as well. Uh, thanks so much for uh, joining us this year, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.